Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture number two of our NSX for Absolute Beginner Tutorial series. Now here is the agenda. What we're gonna discuss in this particular lecture, we will be discussing about NSX controller, a very brief introduction about NSX controllers and their benefits. Then we'll move ahead and we'll discuss about how to register our NSX manager with vCenter server. Then we'll also learn a step-by-step -step procedure of deploying NSX controller. And at the last, we'll have a brief introduction about NSX T-based controller and how NSX V controller implementation is different than NSX T-based controllers. So with that agenda, let's get started. So what exactly is NSX controller? NSX controller is an advanced distributed management system that provides control functions for logical switching and logical routing. NSX controller gets deployed as a cluster of highly available virtual appliances that are responsible for programmatic deployment of virtual networks across NSX data center. NSX control plane is logically separated from all the data plane traffic, which means any failure in the control plane does not impact existing data plane operations. As discussed, controller gets deployed as a cluster of three virtual appliances to give us high availability, more resiliency, better performance, and a scale out distributed management system. Now, because controllers are are actually gets deployed as a three node. So all of your logical switching and logical routing functions get distributed across this NSX controller nodes and distribution of these switching and routing functions is also known as sharding. So sharding is used to distribute your workloads across controller cluster nodes. Now, what, what are the controller benefits? So one of the very important benefit of controller is basically controller distribute logical switching and routing information to all of the ESXi hosts, which are part of that NSX data center or NSX overlay network. The next benefit as discussed, controller gives us a inbuilt clustering solution to and which actually provides us a better availability, resiliency, performance, and a scale out distribution model. Now, another important benefit of controller is basically it they maintains the entire network state of your NSX architecture. That is the reason NSX controller also known as a brain of NSX networking. Since NSX controller are having a true state of entire NSX networking, they maintains couple of important tables which are very much required for logical switching and logical routing to work. And those tables are known as VTAP table, MAC table and ARP table. So these tables are used by controller for packet forwarding and packet lookup. And last but not least, one more important advantage of NSX controller is basically ARP suppression. NSX controller reduce the ARP broadcast traffic over the physical network by providing a ARP suppression capabilities. Not only that, controller also remove the dependency on multicast protocol or dependency on physical switches for forwarding VXLAN packets. So these are the key benefits of NSX controller, which actually help us and simplify entire NSX deployment and NSX networking. So now let's move on to a, a lab where we're going to discuss about a step-by-step -step deployment of NSX controller. And before that, how do we go and integrate our NSX manager with vCenter server? Okay, so this is a lab where we're going to discuss about how to register vCenter server with NSX manager. So let's click on start and let's go ahead with her lab. So as you could see that this is our vCenter server. Let's provide vCenter SSO credentials administrator at the rate of vSphere.local. Provide the SSO password of our vCenter server. Click here to log in. And as you could see that we are successfully logged into our vCenter server. Now click on the menu. And as you could see that there is no networking and security plugin as of now. So let's go to our NSX manager. Give a NSX manager username is admin password as VMware. Click on login 
and as you could see that in the previous lecture we have already gone through this NSX appliance dashboard and for registration as we discussed we need to click on manage vCenter registration so as you could see that on the left side you have a section NSX management service and that is the section which we need to configure and provide our vCenter SSO information to integrate NSX manager with vCenter server so click on the edit provide the lookup service URL so provide the PSC information so our PSC is PSC-01a.govmlab.local provide the SSO username of our PSC administrator at the rate of vSphere.local provide the password and click on OK click on yes and as you could see that the registration is in progress and now as you could see that if you look at the status the status shows as connected which or as you could see that basically it, it's all about registering NSX solution user to our vCenter lookup services now click here to edit and provide our vCenter server information so that is the section where we need to provide our vCenter server information so our vCenter server name is vcsa-01a now provide the SSO username of our vCenter server administrator at the rate of vSphere.local and provide the SSO password of our vCenter server click on OK click on yes and now as you could see that the registration is in progress and as you could see that the status is connected so when you look at the status as connected which means that your vCenter server is successfully registered with your sorry your NSX manager is successfully registered with your vCenter server so now let's go back to our vCenter server you you need to log out and log in again to see that plugin NSX plugin in our vCenter inventory so click on log out and provide the vCenter credentials again password click here to log in click on the menu and now as you could see that you do see an option networking and security so this option comes only when we register our NSX manager with vCenter server by following the steps we just discussed so once you register your NSX manager with vCenter server the plugin would be right will be right here click on networking and security and that is the dedicated dashboard as you could see that which gives you NSX system information NSX fabric information here it gives you NSX logical switch information so that's a pretty much a very good dashboard and this is a dashboard from where you can configure entire NSX networking so click here to log out so now let's move on to our next section where we're going to learn about how to deploy NSX controller so in this lab, we're going to discuss about NSX controller deployment. Click on start. Click here to get access to our vCenter server. Provide SSO username administrator at the rate of vSphere.local. Provide SSO password of our vCenter server. Click here to log in. And as you could see that we are successfully logged into our vCenter server. Now click here to browse the inventory. As you could see that in our vCenter server, we have a one data center then we have a compute cluster a compute cluster b and the management and edge cluster so we have deployed three cluster in our environment click on menu and as we discussed all the nsx networking is being managed by this particular plugin called networking and security click on networking and security and right there on the dashboard as you could see that we don't have any controller deployed so far so to deploy the controller click on the installation and upgrade and this installation upgrade wizard as you could see that talk about NSX manager click on the controller nodes click on the add and there you need to give the credentials of your NSX controller so we are providing a credentials of our NSX controller click on next and now here as you could see that it asks for a couple of options what name you want to give it to your controller so let's say we give a name as NSX controller hyphen zero one a now as we discussed NSX controller get deployed as a virtual appliance so it's just like deploying another VM so we need to deploy the data center so we need to select the data center select the cluster so we are deploying NSX controller not in our compute cluster because compute cluster is we are holding it for our workloads so we're going to deploy NSX controller in our management cluster select the data store 
obviously this controller has to be deployed on shared storage we never supposed to deploy these controllers on a local data store so we select centralized or SAN storage as iSCSI data store and then let's select any of the host of that management cluster scroll down and there we need to provide the networking because once this NSX controller get deployed it need to have a IP assigned to it and for IP we need to assign a right network we need to attach right network to this controller so select the network I am gonna select this distributed port group which I have already created on our, on our setup and the name of this distributed port group is management VDS so that's our management network and I'm gonna connect this controller to this management network click on OK so as you could see that we have attached this controller to this DVPG called MGMT VDS which is a management network now because NSX controller get deployed as a three node cluster so we need to define the IP pool so that basically as when controller deploy they take IP from that respective IP pool so click here to create a new IP pool I call it as a controller IP pool so it's a controller IP pool give a gateway 20.20.20.1 give a prefix land 24 give a primary DNS information give a domain DNS suffix go vm lab dot local and here you need to provide the controller IP range so we're going to define the IP range is 20.20.16 till 20.20.18 so we'll, we'll first controller will have a 16 IP 20.20.20.16 IP second controller will have 17 IP and third controller will have a 18 IP so as you could see that we created our controller pool let's select this pool click on OK and we can review all of our controller configuration on this wizard click here to scroll down and as we could see that our controller IP pool is right slightly selected here click on finish and as you could see that the controller is being deployed and after a while you would be seeing that your controller is successfully deployed and it should be having a IP address as 20.20.20.16 as you could see it here and the status is connected click on NSX managers and as you could see that we are pretty good from the deployment perspective click on the dashboard and now as you could see that it shows controller node as a green sign which means that you have deployed the NSX controller since it's a lab environment so we just have demonstrate a single controller deployment but in production environment obviously you will be deploying two more controllers from that same by following the same steps what we have followed up for a first controller deployment so this concludes our lap on controller or NSX controller deployment so in the first section we discussed about how do we integrate our NSX manager with vCenter server after successful registration we could see that our networking and security plugin right there in our vCenter server and from that plugin we are managing our entire NSX networking now let's go back to our slide again and let's understand what is the difference between NSX T controller architecture now so far we have discussed about NSX V controllers and how this controller gets deployed now let's have a brief introduction about NSX T controller and how the architecture got changed in NSX T so as you could see that we have a data plane component as a part of NSXT architecture where we don't have not only ESXi as a hypervisor supported but NSXT also support KVM hypervisor it also support various environments such as bare metal server NSX edge and not only those as a transport node but it also supports all of the public cloud vendor for example Azure VMware cloud on AWS IBM Linux native VM also get supported by NSX T architecture as a data plane component and then we have a, on top of data plane component just like our NSX V architecture we have a NSX controller NSX controller always contributing in control plane of NSX architecture and NSX manager as usual always contributing in management plane of that NSX architecture and as a management plane as you could see that NSX manager can be integrated with vCenter server just like our NSX V discussion where we integrated our NSX V manager with the vCenter server similarly NSX T manager can also be integrated with vCenter server for simplified deployment and simplified management NSX T manager can also be integrated with cloud services consumption model or NSX container plugin as well now what is the important thing to remember here is or the difference between NSX V architecture and NSX T architecture 
is in NSXT, the controller does not get deployed as a standalone or individual VMs in NSX manager is a different VM altogether. It doesn't happen in the NSXT world. If you are familiar with the NSX V environment, you might have observed that NSX V manager get deployed as a standalone VM and NSX controller get deployed as a three node virtual appliances. So total four VMs gets deployed to get our management plane and control plane up and running. But in NSXT architecture, as you could rightly see that NSX manager and NSX controller, they both are combined into a single virtual appliance and that virtual appliance call as unified appliance. So in NSXT architecture, instead of deploying three controller VMs and one NSX manager VMs, overall three unified appliance gets deployed in a three node clustering environment to provide us better resiliency, performance and high availability. And most importantly, every unified appliance would be having a management plane and control plane running inside it, unlike NSX V architecture. That's the biggest difference between NSX V and NSX T control plane and management plane architecture. So as you could see that in this particular slide, NSX controller computes all configuration from the management plane. So management plane is is pushing all the configuration to the NSX controller cluster. As you could rightly see it here, your NSX manager is pushing all the compute configuration to the NSX controller and NSX controller pushes this configuration to the forwarding engines which are running on each of the transport nodes. So as you could see that NSX controller taking the information from NSX manager and pushing that information to the transport nodes. Now in NSXT, in NSXV, we just have a ESXi hypervisor as a transport node, but in NSXT, we have a ESXi hypervisor, KVM hypervisor, we have a bare metal servers or any public cloud provider can also be a transport node here. So that's the difference. And another thing, the control plane got distributed between two planes called CCP, also known as central control plane, which actually managed by NSX controller cluster. And then we have a something called LCP, local control plane. And that local control plane is sitting right there on each of the transport node. So that's how your NSX T controller architecture is a little bit uh, different than NSX V architecture, but the concept and fundamental remains the same. The functionality of NSX manager, NSX controller, and the transport node remains the same. That's all for this lecture. We hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for your time. Thank you.